Hi, race fans. I am here uh, with the amazing Daniel Shepard, who is the simulation engineer on the number 10 car, um, Alex Pillow's car this season with IndyCar. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Um, you're just coming off of Texas, right? From yep. TMS. How was that? Yep, it was it was exciting. It was a good it was a good race. Can't believe we got the first race in on Saturday. <laughs> I didn't know that we were gonna actually make that one in. But yeah, no, it was a it was a solid weekend for the Ganassi Ganassi crew. Yeah. No, absolutely no, it was. I was um I was wondering about that too. And I was here in Austin. I was supposed to be there at TMS, but there was a mishap with my credentials. But anyway, um yeah, I it, I'm here in Austin and it was just pouring and I was like, yeah. um yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, like, I, was like, I don't know. The radar looks special. It was like one blob over here, one blob over here. And you see us and you're like, are we going to make it? Is it going to happen? So yeah, it was just, I'm just glad. I'm glad we got them both in, got to put on a great show for the fans and everything. Good, 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 good. Well, let's, um, let's jump right into your role. Um, you know, we often hear things um, like engineer, simulation engineer, performance engineer, and w mm -hmm. what is exactly is a simulation engineer? What's your role on the team? Yeah, so I, I do, a, I actually, so it's a lot of computer work, obviously, engineering simulation. So with the simulations and stuff, uh, they're basically programs that are used to, yeah, simulate the cars. So um, we have basically two major programs. The first one is like a lap time simulation that we use primarily for gearing and everything. So there's a lot of correlation work that goes in, make sure we get a lot of data off the cars. So I make sure that basically the program matches the data that we have from last year and then use it to predict how changes to the car or changes to even like wind and weather are going to affect things. Um, the LTS is primarily for gearing. So like, you know, how the wind or the weather conditions for a certain weekend are going to change what gears we need to put in the car. And then we have a dynamic sim or dynamic simulation that again, you take all the data you had from last year and you do your correlation, make sure all of the stuff in the simulation computer program matches that data. And then you can use that to help the race engineers decide what changes to make on a car. Like, you know, if he's having mm -hmm. trouble in a certain turn, what can I do in that turn? And how do I not affect the other turns that are good? What can I do as a balance? How do I, how do I change the car? And what can I do to fix some of the issues in particular points without ruining the rest of the car? Or where are the trade-offs going to be? Like, if I do this, what, what is the trade-off and how do I do that? So as a simulation engineer, it's more of getting, getting the programs ready, getting the data ready, and then helping using that to predict what changes are going to do to help the race engineers prepare for the weekend and prepare during the weekend. And then even during the weekend, we're doing a lot of like comparisons between cars, making sure that all of the data that's being collected is actually accurate data and is not like, you know, there's not issues with the sensors on the car that's gonna skew the data later on. Cause if there is, we need to know that so that when we do our correlations, we're actually correlating to real data, not not data that has been manipulated incorrectly. So we look at we look at the sensors on the cars and we help, um, I guess, the race engineers and our assistant engineers to kind of make sure that everything that's being collected is proper and then helping the race engineers make the decisions that they need to make in order to improve the cars and help get us up there in the top spots. That's a mouthful. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a lot of technical things. And you know what? Um, we often, we look at these cars and we don't realize, um, well, I mean, mm -hmm. we do realize there are some tech issues, but yeah, there's so much. <laughs> there's that goes so much that goes into actually like the setup of a car or deciding what to run. And there's so much that can be changed on the cars. And there's so many reasons why you would change something on a car. <laughs> so there's a lot of, there's a lot of technicality that goes, we don't just show, we don't just show up, put the cars on and go. There's a whole lot that goes on behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. No, absolutely. And you know, when you watch as a viewer or as a fan, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, you don't get to see that. You just, you hear things like, oh, the sensor or, or there's a sensor off or something like that. And you're like, what exactly does that mean? But that's where you come in, right? Exactly, that's, the, yeah. that's where you come in. So um, a lot of technical jargon there that we just talked about. How about in a practical way, can you break down, like, what, what does a race weekend look like for you? You know, um, yeah, what is what does that look like for you, the race weekend? 
Yeah. So a lot of times I obviously have to have my stuff prepped and everything and ready to go before we even load the car. Cause I like, you know, they're asking us questions here or we're doing other sort of like, you know, looking and everything. We have to have all basically all of our tools ready and buttoned up by the time we go for a race weekend. So when we get there at the race weekend, obviously we, again, they come up with, they come up with some scenarios and everything for basically for us to run through the simulations and everything on our setup day. And then like, you know, even before practice one starts, I run, I run gear simulations because we change gears every session based on wind conditions, weather conditions and everything. So it's a constant, it's a constant process. So I get everything, get everything ready and send out all of my reports in before practice one so that they have the information they need. Um, we've got a bunch of other tools, obviously, that we're basically ready and set up so that like, you know, during, during the session, a race engineer can say, I'd like to do this. What do I need to do to compensate sort of questions and everything. So we have all the tools ready. Um, and then the prep work before the session, then actually during the session, it's a lot of helping the race engineer again, say like, you know, oh, this is weird, like, you know, this is what I wanted, or this is, this is, this is weird, what's wrong, or this is what I want to, this is what I want to accomplish, how do I get there, so it's helping both of those, and then, like, you know, even if there's a second session in the day, again, it's come back, make sure everything that you did in the first session correlates well, or matches what you think it should, prediction-wise, from the sim, adjusting anything in the sim that needs to be adjusted, and then rerunning all of the prep work stuff to have out to them in a timely manner, so that they can make all the changes they need before the next session, and then during that next session, again, it's just working with the race engineers and even like, you know, making sure that all of the data that's coming through is valid data because there's a, there's a lot of information that's streaming in through the cars. So it's, it, it's just making sure that all of the information that's coming through too is, is accurate information. You know, I hear um, a lot from you, the data, the data, which is a lot of testing, testing, testing. And I want to talk to you about something because I will tell you one thing. Uh, I want to talk about COVID for a second because I'll tell you, I'll tell you, last season, this last year, when COVID hit, um, you you had to have such a condensed, condensed schedule, right? I mean, mm -hmm. the races were so condensed. And every time we interviewed the drivers, the drivers were like, oh, we love it. Oh, this is great. You know, we get to keep the momentum going. It's great. It's boom, 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 in and out, get it done. And I was thinking, but what's it like for someone like you who who is really you know behind the scenes behind the driver behind the team how has the covid situation you know with the condensed schedules affected you and um and do you prefer the longer schedules so that you can get more data get more information um to the, obviously that affects you right um so obviously uh the way it worked out last year we're pretty happy yeah. we're pretty happy with the condensed schedules and the way it works Whoa. but i feel like it i feel like it, it helps um so i feel like it it almost puts more of an emphasis on what i do because it Ooh. is the preparation and it is being ready and it is in a sense having all of your ducks in a row because when you get there then it is go 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 so it's a lot more of it's a lot more reliant then on something like what I do and having having the preparation and having gone through a bunch of scenarios to have to more of I guess I guess if you have less time less time to think about what you're going to do so you want to be more prepared for if for the different scenarios when you actually get into one of the scenarios so it it almost didn't I mean it makes it obviously makes for a long day while we're there and it makes for like you know more like you know with the with the shorter sessions it it definitely uh pays for you to be right the first time and have to do less adjustments the second time but obviously then you're in the shop longer before you go and you're more and you have more preparation work done so it's just it's it's not necessarily good or bad it's just a different way to do it and it's just a different mindset of like you know you have to uh you have to know what you can do and the time limit that you have too. So it's also playing with different tools and knowing knowing what options you actually have in the time frame that you have while you're working there. You know, and it's so funny because um, of course it it the result ended up great for Chip Ganassi Racing because yeah. Scott <laughs> yeah because Scott you know everybody was literally struggling um and then the, here comes scott dixon hold my beer let's go do this <laughs> let's, we, we got we got this and i just i like to say it's because of all the prep work that we did that, we, that helped him out too it is. 
Tola, well, that's it. That's it. And it's because of you too as well. So um, that's, that's so funny that I, I was, I was thinking here, you were going to say something completely different, but mm -hmm. that's just, that's just amazing that uh, when you, that's why I'm here interviewing you. Yeah, so it's just, I guess it it's just, it's just a different mentality of right. a race weekend when like, you know, instead of having one or two sessions throughout the whole day, mm -hmm. you've got to, you've got to be mentally prepared and just ready to it's just having more of a, in a sense, more of a plan of if this, then that sort of, sort of preparation work in a sense. No, absolutely. I can totally, I get bombarded. Let me tell you, I get bombarded. There's too much going on. So I'll be like, there's this scenario and this scenario. Yeah. So I totally, I totally get that 100%, um, which brings me to another, you know, question that leads right into this. Um, let's talk about like your biggest challenge, right? Uh, so, I mean, you're often having, it sounds like you have to balance um, a lot of uncertainties uh, mm -hmm. with, and you're always kind of, you know, simulating um, race scenarios or, or, you know, indie car races and things like that to, to get a great result for your team. Um, tell me about what's that, what is that balance like? But most importantly, what, what's the biggest challenge you have to face on your end? Yeah, I think it's just, again, it's, it's a lot of time management mm -hmm. because again, my, I guess my results are only useful if I get them out in a manner such that they can actually be used. So if I, if it takes me, if we have an hour and a half and it takes me an hour to do my work, it, they don't have time to adjust based on what I say in the half hour left in a sense. I mean, that might be a condensed, but the, sometimes that's this how it actually is too. So it's like a lot of it is making sure that you you are in a sense organized and have everything ready to go and are working so that you can produce results and give them to people who are actually able to use what you're what you're doing so a lot of it is just keeping organized and making sure that everything that I do can actually be used and is useful and a lot of it is also communicating the results of the simulations obviously I spend the most time with them so I kind of understand in a sense what works about them and if there are shortcomings, what they are too. So a lot of it is making sure that I explain that to everybody else too, so that they understand what I, I guess what I'm confident about in with the results that I get and what I'm less confident about. In. So walk me through this then. We're on, so practice is usually when you gather all the data, right? Okay. And you're, and then you will set it up for quality, right? And then quality mm -hmm. obviously is so important. Okay. <laughs> Let, walk me through something a scenario like this let's say your driver Alex Pillow does I don't know hits the wall on the oval during quality and now you have the you know you have to you have a couple hours because we're in this condensed schedule and you have a couple yep. hours until the race right because that's yep. essentially what it would have been at Texas at TMS right okay mm -hmm. Where do you come in? <laughs> what is what? What do you have to do now? Now that the car has been crashed, <laughs> so I'm obviously a lot less important at that point. Um, okay, uh, it would be the main goals would be putting the car back together and then basically <laughs> taking it back to the. So you you obviously don't want to provide him with something that he's never seen. He just he just hit the wall. Bad things have happened. We want to make him as comfortable as we can and everything because he still has to go and race. And obviously, there's some hesitation after after thing uh, and i mean so it, i guess i guess there's hesitation after not knowing what happened so right. as an engineer though i might be trying to help him figure if he doesn't understand what happened i would be looking at data to try to help him understand what did happen because once they realize what has happened there's a lot more confidence back to uh, after you after you know what went wrong but if you if you don't if you if something happened and they crashed and they don't know why that's that tends to derail the confidence and that's obviously not what we want to do so it would be sitting with him figuring out what he needs as a small change, but basically going back to his last most happy point with the car. And then obviously the guys would be running around trying to fix the car. So that's getting it back into a point where he can race is obviously the primary goal. And then the secondary goals would be, yeah, taking the car setup back to something that is known and good with whatever small adjustment he needs and then helping him understand what happened, why it happened and what he can do to not get in that situation again. You know, you bring up such a good point. What, 
Um, I love that you you talked about the confidence with the drivers. We don't realize um, that, right? We think it's mostly, uh, well, and it is, confidence is a mental thing, yeah. but it depends on things like you just said, you know, trying to figure out the problem of why this incident happened. Yeah. You know, I was um, at Laguna Seca in 2019. I talked to Felix Rosenquist. Were you on his car at that time in 2019? No, I wasn't. No. Well, I talked to him. This reminded me of an incident that um, happened to him. We talked about the Pocono incident. It was a scary incident. And then he also had a, a scary incident at the Indy 500, like during practice. But he said mm -hmm. the Pocono was was more scary for him because he didn't know why it happened. So I imagine in an incident like that, how important your role is to come in and talk to these drivers and try to figure out like why this is happening so that, especially on the ovals, right? Because the ovals are yeah. so unpredictable. So I yeah. can- So a lot um, of it is, yeah taking the data and using the tools that we have on the car to say, here's what happened and here's why it happened. And here's, yeah, I mean, and once, once you explain it and once they understand why it happened again, you bring, you, you, you un, you've unraveled the puzzle and there is no puzzle anymore. So it's not, yeah, it's, it's all about making sure that they're comfortable and they're comfortable when they understand what happened. Absolutely. That's, you know, that's fascinating. Um, and it makes sense. It totally makes sense. Um, how about on the flip side of this, uh, what is the most rewarding and the best part of your job for you? <laughs> I just think it's exciting to not do the same thing every day. I love the challenge and the changes. Like, you know, there's no two weekends in a row where somebody's gonna ask for the ask the exact same simulation question. So it's like, you know, obviously it's getting the simulations prepped and everything, but then what you can do with them and everything is where I think it's exciting. Nice. I like that. I like the unpredictability. Mm -hmm. And speaking of um, kind of like some unpredictability or, or versatility here, IndyCar is such a versatile racing series. You know, you have the road courses, the street courses, the ovals. Um, do you, how does, what is that like for you in terms of um, setup and, and gathering, you know, and making sure the simulations, obviously they're different for each track. Do you think there are certain, or is there a particular track that's more difficult than the other? Um, it, it really depends on which tool we're using. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. we need them to be right for all of them. So sometimes right. the ovals can be a bit more difficult just because of the the basically what you gain when you're in a tow and the amount of dirty air that you have to run in they can be it can be just a bit more difficult to to separate factors in an oval than it is in a road course gotcha or street course scenario the road course and street course are kind of like grouped into one scenario and then you do the the speedway ovals and then the short ovals in a different scenario so sometimes the short ovals are a bit difficult too just because it's an oval where you're also breaking so just because of the the nature of that, it can be a little more difficult as well. Okay, awesome. That's good to know because, and not ovals are all the same. Correct. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the, the short ovals are a lot different than the super speedways, especially for, well, obviously package configurations and how the cars are set up, which then changes how you would run the simulations too. Awesome. I just want to make that clear because a lot of people don't realize, they think that all the the ovals are the same, but they're not. Yeah. They're actually not. No. Totally no, there's quite the there's quite a big difference between somewhere like Texas and somewhere like St. Louis. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And even the banking on TMS is just I when you you can't really see that on camera, but when you mm -hmm. when you go, it's like insane. It's just mm -hmm. so insane to see it in person. Absolutely. Um, so you know, I often talk to drivers about um the challenges they face when they move from like a team to a team to a different mm -hmm. team. Um, they obviously face some obstacles. What about you? Do you ever face any of those, any obstacles and challenges when you switch drivers? Um, so a lot of what I do is for all, like all four of our cars. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I might stand on the 10 stand and I might like chime in on their strategy and everything. So I guess I am particularly on that car and and everything but a lot of the work that I do is for all four of our cars and is for the team as a whole so it's not I mean obviously there's different dynamics working with different mm -hmm. people but there's no real I mean it's not 
a different role on a like you know if i if they put me on a uh, on the eight car the 10 car the nine car the 48 car it's still the same it's still the same role obviously you're you're working with different people so you have to learn how to what what the dynamic of the each team is and how to best interact with people but there's no mm -hmm. there's no real difference in the role that i would play no okay well that's well that's good to know too and uh, and obviously because you know different drivers have different driving styles i'm sure and i'm sure different um you know they prefer different setups and different things like that mm -hmm. but for the most part you're you're just you know you're doing the technical stuff on the car which doesn't really change too much from driver to driver is that correct um not not really not as much yeah. yeah okay well no but that's good to know because we you know when we're learning um, about this role and everything, it's it's good to know like just how you know how everything is working on the car. So mm -hmm. I find it fascinating. I'm sure other people do as well. The technical side of everything. So um, which let's let's go into a little bit of just talking about IndyCar in general. Um, you know, IndyCar is always evolving. Uh, mm -hmm. Every year, every season, right? We have technical advances, aero screen, this and that, and all kinds of things like that. Um, how do you, how challenging and how do you keep up with the constant evolving demands every year? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's kind of, in a sense, like what I'm here for is to try to help right. us predict how some of those changes are going to going to be different. Obviously, we get we get data for whatever changes they're going to make. And then obviously we have to take that information and use it and then try to predict what the best ways are to, to in a sense, yeah, make, make the change as beneficial as it can be and not a hindrance in any way. So it's obviously the testing that we do in the off season with all of the new changes and regulations and stuff that they have for the upcoming season, that's a big that's a big deal for us to try to get all of the information that we can and try to learn like you know what all, what all a part or a piece or a bit of technology does to the car and how we can use that yeah to help the driver and make it a make it a benefit even if at like you know first run out it's not it's not all we thought it was going to be. <laughs> No, yeah, totally. even just like, you know, learning how to use the aero screen and how to balance, like, you know, obviously that changes the weight of the car and where the weight is in the car and all of that. So there's a lot, there was a lot that came with that just to try to, in a sense, not like, like figure out how to put it back to a scenario that the driver is comfortable in with the, the, the just the addition of that piece. Awesome. That, and, and that's, that's good because, you know, um, you just everything's it's just constantly constantly evolving and so mm -hmm. it's it's you you can't you're just trying to stay ahead of the curve and obviously chip and nasty racing is doing something right because <laughs> you, your the team is just consistently yeah. doing well um even with condensed testing time with everything so obviously i'm not going to ask you what the secret to the sauce is so don't worry <laughs> i won't ask you that <laughs> but um no but there you go there you go okay um let's you know let's change let's change gears a little bit switch things up and get to know you a little bit better on a personal level mm -hmm. um so tell me how did you get into into racing and where did your obviously you have a passion for motorsports so where did that come from so I actually just grew up as a fan when I was, when I was little, I'd watch it on TV and like, yeah, even when they were racing it. So I'm, I'm from near Cleveland. So when they were racing at Berkeley front airport, I would go to the races as a kid. We went to mid Ohio and Michigan and all of those. So I just kind of grew up as a fan. And then when I got to college, I I'd always, I'd always loved math actually. And I just kind of figured that, um, I was like, I was like, well, let's go, let's go racing. Like, why not? So I, I, I didn't, I don't have a great, like, you know, dedicated, but you know, I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up in the sport. I didn't grow up anywhere. I just grew up as a fan and then decided that I thought it'd be fun to be a race engineer. I don't know. <laughs> That's awesome. No, I love it. Um, what about, I, I love that because I, I grew up with racing too, but my, it was from my dad. So, mm -hmm. but you, nobody, you just on your own. I think that's fantastic. I think that's even, I think that's even cooler yeah. to be honest. I do totally cool. Uh, what about, um, do you, do you have, you know, anyone who has inspired you, maybe a hero, it could be in the racing world or outside of the racing world, any, a mentor, anyone like that? 
Not, not in particular. I mean, so one of the, one of the, I got to meet Jocelyn Bell Burnell at a physics conference actually. And I think it's great just to see, you know, women making strides in all yeah. of, in all of science and in all of the, so, I mean, I feel like, I feel like that's sort of an inspiration in that way, but I've never really had, I guess I can't say that I've had a particular mentor, but I guess it's like, you know, seeing other women doing the science and stuff. I mean, I guess it sounds weird, but I didn't realize, I didn't even realize how weird it would be to be, you know, to be a woman in racing. So I just thought it was cool. So I thought we'd go racing. <laughs> no, I know that's, I love that. No, um, that's, I love that attitude. You just didn't even think about it. You just, no. you went for it. No, that's even better. Yeah. Um, that's even, I think that's awesome. I think that's so cool. Um, let me, you know, I want to talk about one, go back to working at Chip Ganassi Racing for a second, because mm -hmm. um, you're part, I mean, you're part of one of the most successful teams in IndyCar and it's one of the best ones. Um, just what is it, what's it like? What's it like working there? Um, do you get, you know, do you get to even, do you even get to interact with Chip a lot or what is, you know, what's the team dynamic there and how, how does that make you feel to be part of such a successful team? I think they've done a really good job building a group here. It's, mm -hmm. it's not, it's definitely not a scenario where it's each car for themselves. We work, we work as a team and as one team. And we like, you know, if whatever one of our four cars wins, we've all won. And like, so it, it's all of the victories are part of all of us. So we're all, we're all one team working for one goal. And like, you know, we're always, we're always here to win the Indy 500 and to win the championship. And that's like, you know, that's Chip's, Chip's thought, like, you know, he likes what he, he likes winners. So he wants to win the 500 and he wants to win races so that we can win a championship. And that's what he, that's what he repeatedly tells us every weekend in our race meetings, like, you know, do the obvious things right so that we can win. And it's great to be in an organization where I mean, I'm obviously like, you know, your goal is clear. It's, everybody's working toward the same thing and it's nice to be part of a group that does it like you know again we're not while we while we each wear different shirts and we're separated on different cars everybody's there to help everybody else out we have a wonderful wonderful group organization wonderful team effort and yeah like I said Chip, Chip's always in our race meetings he's always there and he's always telling you to do the right things and bring it home bring it home as high as you can get the most points he's always got the end game like uh, right in, right in front of you and it's always clear what we need to be doing as a team and how how like you know everybody needs to be working to one goal and that's the 500 and the championship that's awesome and you know um every time I talk to people whether they're drivers or people as yourself on the teams I just love the camaraderie that IndyCar mm -hmm. is um you don't see that in others other racing yeah. series um particularly like Formula One, it's every driver for themselves, <laughs> everyone for themselves. Yeah. So I think that's that's great to know that um, that that teamwork is kind of like the thing that makes the dream work. And and yeah. to see it on, to, to, to hear it from you on such a successful team when you have so many cars mm -hmm. on, you know, on, on your team, I think that's great. Cause a lot of you, you know, the cars are always consistently doing well every season. So something's working and the teamwork is working. So that's, yeah, I think that's really like the major, the major thing behind it is that instead mm -hmm. of building four teams, he's built one team where like, you know, again, we wear, we wear different shirts, but we are one team. And that's, that's awesome. And that's really cool. I like, I like that a lot. Uh, so, and that's, I think that's important too, when you talk to people, um, team bosses and things like that, they often talk about how important it is to be one, you know, mm -hmm. to work as one. Cause you do, you need all your cars running um, yes. yep. up there, you know? And so yep. one we car does cars, that. One, two, three, four each weekend. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. And you guys, it's like, I always laugh too when, when, um, when like what TMS, when I saw Scott and Alex uh Polo, you know right there i was thinking oh my goodness now we just need marcus up there and it's a it's a cgr uh, marcus podium and, marcus and tk up there and it would have been a party <laughs> yes it would have been amazing right i was like you guys have enough cars you know just like the buddies there's enough cars there i love it goal no. is to take a, we'll take the whole podium anytime we can 
Take it. Take the podium. Exactly. I love it. I love it. Oh, TK. TK is great too. How amazing is that to, to, to have him back on yeah. the team as well? Yeah, Are he's you... great. He's obviously a great addition to the team and he's a great guy and he's got a ton of experience. So it's always, it's always great when he's back. What about, well, you know, it's kind of, I was going to, you've actually worked with a lot of different drivers, Scott Dixon, right? Felix Rosenquist. Who else? Are, are you, do you get to interact at all with Jimmy Johnson as well? I mean, he's, he, I mean, the drivers come to the shop all the time mm-hmm. and they come up and like, you know, sit with the race engineers and they'll just talk. And then obviously we do a lot of like, you know, discussions and everything as a full, mm-hmm. as a full team and stuff like, you know, obviously we've been doing more teams meetings recently with every, the whole situation and everything, but yeah, they, uh, the drivers will come in and they'll, they'll debrief about last weekend and they'll just come and hang out at the shop and uh, especially during the off seasons and stuff, they were in quite a bit, just you know, getting a little feel for everything. Obviously they were getting the cars ready, getting the seats ready and the steering wheels ready. So they were in for that. And then just, you know, having additional discussions with their engineers and everything. So yeah, they've all been, they've all been around and at the shop and they're all like, you know, we're, we're kind of in, still in a separated mode. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, oh, you know, right. usually we sit in one, in one, all four teams are in one truck and one, we have a we have one truck that's basically an engineering truck with one long table and all four teams would sit there but obviously we're we're separated now just because of the current situation in the world but i'm sure we'll get back to it where like you know all the teams sit and all the people sit in one in one room in one group and then you have you know discussions and everybody can know what's going on with each car and everybody can know what the plans are with each team again it really is one one team with four four sep- four separate teams but it's all one team all one team that's um yeah and i i, I keep forgetting yeah the covid situation the yeah. covid it's just it's here it's here you can't yeah, be yeah. all together um as much yeah totally yeah. totally puts a damper on things um wh- you obviously you know get to work with these drivers do you have any fun stories um with any of them or any fun memories can you think of any i know i put you on the spot there but <laughs> i mean uh they are big personalities. <laughs> yes, they, they definitely are. I mean, they're great to work with and everything. I mean, yeah. we got, Charlie took us to an escape room my first year working here and stuff. So we've gotten to do, we've gotten to do a bunch of fun, different, different activities and everything. So they're, I mean, they're great to work with. They're really, they're really all great people. What about, um, I will talk a little bit just about, um, cause Mark, you know, you, you see these drivers um, come in, obviously Scott Dixon has been with, Chip Ganassi, yeah. Chip Ganassi racing for a while. So he's pretty set in there. Um, but you see like Marcus Erickson come in and then you see, you know, now Alex Pillow is in there. Um, mm-hmm. What's it like just, you know, having these new drivers come in and and I'll get to Alex Pillow in a second because something extraordinary happened with mm-hmm. you recently. So we'll get to that. But yeah, um, but yeah what's, it, what's it like having these, you know, um, these new drivers come in and fresh, fresh talent. I mean, Marcus Erickson coming in from Formula One is pretty yeah. cool. And then, yeah. um, and he's been such, a, I, one thing I do love about him is he's such an advocate for IndyCar. So mm-hmm. what's it like, you know, working with um, with these new, new young drivers? And then also having Scott Dixon there as well as a veteran. Yeah, I, it's really, it's an interesting, I guess it's an interesting dynamic, especially, you know, having Felix come in and then having Alex come in and having right. Marcus come in and even like, you know, Jimmy coming in too. It's like, you know, Scott is obviously there and like, you know, we have, again, we have some of his data. We've had his data for a long, like, you know, a bunch of years, like he's been here for a long time. So a lot of it is like, you know, and at first, at first it's showing the other drivers how Scott does it, because obviously, you know, if you look at the time charts, he, he tends to be, he tends to be up there and he tends to set the benchmark for the rest of them but then like you know every once in a while somebody else will do something and you can see like you know oh like you know maybe maybe this is actually the way it should be done so it's really nice to have it's obviously always nice to bring new people in and just see how they do things or like you know what works for them and having you know what have they done in their past career that like you know is beneficial and how can we how can we all be better based on that information and obviously having scott here as uh, the benchmark for some of it is helpful for them just getting up to speed too and then it's always it's always 
encouraging too to see them be f- find something too and then like you know all of us improve as a whole team because of what what they do or just how they drive differently than him because not everybody obviously not everybody drives the same style as Scott but that obviously and it has its advantages and then every once in a while it has its disadvantages too so it's great to like you know build up all four drivers based on the information that we have from Scott who's been here for a while and then three three newer fresher drivers who just have a different perspective and have a different background on how how it all works that's i mean that's a pretty high benchmark scott dixon well, <laughs> yeah a, he's won just, a few yeah races. he's won a few races you know uh, you know just, i mean he literally the other drivers are like oh if scott dixon's here who cares about who else that comes in here it's scott dixon you know yeah. it's always it's always it's he's the one he's the one that you always have to keep an eye on um that's so funny but yeah pretty high benchmark there um but let's let's switch up just a second i want to um talk about something really cool and extraordinary that happened um you made indycar history um which is really amazing you were the first female over the wall pit crew member on a winning car Mm -hmm. when alex palo won the season opener this year at um barber the grand prix of alabama what does that mean to you (laughs) Uh, i mean it's 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 great i can't i can't believe i guess i finally i'm glad somebody's finally done it so that hopefully we can open the door so that a bunch of other women can do it too i just think it's i mean it's great it's obviously it's 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 nice to contribute it's nice to be recognized for it and i just hope it inspires other women to want to join racing join the pit crew do all the things you know like you know just because you're a woman doesn't mean you can't do it no exactly um no that's exactly right i mean would you would you say is this is this like one of your proudest moments of your career or is there another one that you've had um I mean, so, so we were also, so Kate and I were on Scott's car when he won the championship and we were also mm-hmm. the first female engineers to, yeah. to win a championship. So I feel like that obviously both moments are, are groundbreaking. And I just want them again, to be inspirations to, to women when, I guess, whether you want to go into racing or you want to go in whatever career path you want, like, you know, just do it do it. It's great. Like, you know, like, you know, follow your dreams. And I feel like both, I feel like both of those accomplishments, I guess, cause one of them in a sense, like, you know, is representing an engineer. And then the other one is more like, you know, the, the over the wall, the, not that I'm an athlete, but like, you know, the, I guess they're two different, they're two different aspects of the sport. And it's, it's really great, I guess, to do both so that I can like, you know, we can, we can keep moving forward, hopefully. No, absolutely. And, um, it is great because, you know, I will tell you, it is, uh, having women in motorsports is, is awesome. You know, whether you're a PR person, whether you're an engineer or strategist, or whether you're on the pit crew, but, you know, it is, for a lack of better word, I'm just going to say, normally the men are the ones, you know, on the pit crew. Let's, mm-hmm. let's just, that's kind of how it is right now. But, um, to have you breaking barriers and, um, showing and and I know there are like in NASCAR we have um mm-hmm. we have women there as well and it's starting to become the norm yeah, but exactly. to be part, yeah it's starting yes. to become the norm now um yeah. and also in formula 1 we have um you know like Michelle on the Aston Martin team as well so but like I said typically you're behind the wall so being able to be there and and actually in the car and getting your hands dirty being part of this team like that is pretty incredible so yeah pat on the back because <laughs> that's rare. yeah it's just I just hope that other people can see it as just a way a way in and like yeah. and they can they can do it too yeah no absolutely absolutely um not me I think I have to do some more <laughs> well, I don't know I could I do three pound I weights think, I think you, know? you can do you can do tear offs yeah. you can do yeah, tear-offs. T- thank you I can do the tear offs I, yeah, I can you do that I can do this real you quick I'm quick I yeah, got exactly. this. I'm gonna exactly I get, <laughs> jump on there. Whoosh! There you go. Just, yeah, you just gotta go get it. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, I'm not gonna be lifting the tires. I know that. No, okay. No, that, Don't, no, I'm not sure I'm either. No, but I got I got yeah. the tear offs. I can do that fine. <laughs> I get to the tear offs. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um okay, one more thing. Um, just because talking about Alex Pillow for a second, let's 
what was it like when you won with that? And and yeah, tell me tell me what Alex Alex Pillow was like when he won that uh, race with you guys. Oh, he, the team. he was so excited. It was so great to be a part of it. Like it's always it's it's great to be a part of a first win just because of the like, you know, the level of excitement and everything that he had just for winning. It was great. He's such a he's such a nice guy and he's he's a great, he's a great driver to work with, obviously. And you know, going through that race, like, you know, we're like, you have to make the fuel, you have to go fast and he'll his that's easy. Like, you know, over the radio and you're like, okay, but if you say so, like, but no, he did a great, he did a great job on that race. And like, you know, just the level of excitement that he had, like, you know, took a whole selfie with the team um, in victory circle and everything. So no, it was great. It's great to be a part of the second car that week one at one. And just to have Alex get his first win with us. It was, it was great. He's such a great, he's a really great driver. Yeah, he is. He's going to do, he's, he's going to do great. He's going to do great things. He totally is, you know, and I'm still, he told us that uh, at the Indy 500 last year that he walked up to, um, I think he said to Chip and was just like, kind of scoping you guys out and wanted to wanted to be on the team mm-hmm. he made that happen he did make it yeah he's well, i don't know i don't know how it ended up but he's but he's here and he's obviously shown even from race one that he deserves to be here and he's earned his spot and obviously if he keeps driving like that he'll be he'll be an indie car for a long time for a long time it's always good to see he i consider him one of the good guys it's always good to see one of the good guys do well. Do you know what I mean? Because he, he has such a great attitude with he racing. Does. So yeah, he does. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Okay, I'll let that. I just had we had to I had to add that little tidbit in there because I think that's so cute. He was so happy to take a selfie with the with the team. He was. That's, he was very yeah yeah. We got he posted the selfie online and everything. There's a selfie with the team and Alex. It's great. No, what? it was a great. Not exactly. <laughs> that, that's perfect. Okay, awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, since we are talking, <laughs> talk, I love it. Since we are talking though about um, just you know being female and mm-hmm. being a woman in this industry, um, talk to me a little bit about have you have you had to face any challenges or um, bad experiences so far in your in your career path? And it doesn't necessarily have to be an IndyCar; it could be just you know leading up mm-hmm. to this career path. Honestly, I think that um, the guys here are great. And I think, again, it's more like, you know, I guess, I guess I like to think I'm here because I'm the right person for the job. And I just happen to be a female. And I don't feel like I don't, I guess I don't feel like the people in the sport, like, you know, other te- other teams, even our team, like, you know, I feel, I've always felt included. The only people that have actually done it are some of the fans at the tracks. They actually tend to be the ones who aren't necessarily the most kind or the most respectful, but I feel like everybody in the sport and all of the people around me that I interact with daily. Yeah. I've never had any issues. That um, you don't know how happy that makes me feel um, to hear you say that. Um, Even just talking to um, when I interviewed Kara Adams, you Mm -hmm. know, she told me about some of the things she told me is some funny stories that happened to her just being patted on the head, you know? And, and so, but it's, but that's I'm sorry you had to deal with the fans being nasty. Yeah, every that's... once in a while you just get some I mean, people people will be people, but every once in a while right. you just you're just like like you get comments obviously that you just don't that you just don't need an aren't appropriate when you're in a work scenario as well. Obviously, Absolutely. obviously they're there as as fans and having a good time and obviously we want people to have a good time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they can well, they can just say whatever they think as well. And it's not necessarily the most polite things, but you'll get that anywhere. And it's so, I guess I'm right. really glad and thankful that at least the people that I work with every day and the ones in the sport, I get, again, see you as, see you as a person who's the right person for their job and just happens to be female. Not necessarily that you're, you're a girl in the sport and like, you know, right. oh, we talk down to you and like, you know, you can't do your job. You're not qualified. Why are you here? Like none of that has ever none of that has ever happened to me. So it's just, that, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. people being people in other scenarios ha- tends to be the most the most troubling portion of it. Well, and I'm sure the fans out there, well, but, you know, maybe maybe you're glad there aren't any fans right now. <laughs> maybe well, you're no, no, I mean, no, I am I'm glad that there, I mean, I'm glad that there are fans, but like, you know, it's just like, you know, people, I, I yes. would like people to be respectful when you're do, like, you Absolutely. know, when you're doing a job. Um, it's, I'm sure there's some <clears throat> alcohol involved in those scenarios, right? <laughs> some, I'm guessing sometimes, and sometimes people are just, you know, I mean, it could yeah. happen even in like, you know, 
a, a daily a daily scenario too so there are oh, people absolutely. who will just be people it just happens to be when you're when you're in a race car like a racing scenario when you you feel singled out because you because you are in the minority in all honesty and it just makes it makes a situation where you are in the minority that much more uncomfortable when it's in a sense pointed out and put in front of your face yeah no absolutely totally i mean we get it every day i we it's something that we have to deal with being a female but the good news and what makes me so happy is that you don't have that on your team yeah not at all that is everybody here at nrc is great so which leads me into um, just the over, uh, kind of an overall uh, question for you. How do you, how do you feel about um, with IndyCar currently right now? Do you believe that IndyCar is doing a good job, not only with female representation, because um, there's a lot going on, right? We have like Peretta Autosport, we have a, a female Indy 500 driver coming in, Simona, um, you know, things like that. But um, what about growth opportunities as well? Because like, like you said, you're able to go from being an assistant engineer into a simulation mm -hmm. engineer. Um, how, how, how has that been for you with IndyCar and, and that kind of representation as a female? Yeah, I mean, at this point, I honestly actually think they are doing a good job. Obviously, they've launched a new program this year to be inclusive in all, like, in, in all aspects of diversity which I think is right. a great, I think it's a great, almost in a sense, acknowledgement that they need to be doing better and then actually taking steps forward and doing something about making it better. And I think it's great to, even just since I've been here in the past few years, just to see the number of women increase throughout pit lane. I feel like there definitely are more women on pit lane than when I started. So it's great to see, great to see people coming and even like, you know, during May, we'll meet with some of the IUPUI students or we'll see them and like, you know, there are more, there are more students in the motorsports engineering program and there's more people reaching out interested in doing it. Like, you know, I had somebody call me like, you know, they said, hey, we saw an article about you. Like, you know, we didn't know, like, you know, other women were out there. Can we just talk to you? Why we want inspiration to go forward. And that's what, that's what really matters to me is to try to find and help other women get in the sport and give them an opportunity too, which is obviously what IndyCar has been doing with their, with their new program as well. And I can see, I feel like even from the time that I've been here, you can see the change and you can see the results and there are more women on pit lane. And that's, that's obviously the goal of doing features on women is to get it out there and get, like you say, Hey, you, you, everybody can do this, no matter which gender you are, no matter what skin color you have, no matter what, 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 how you how you classify yourself no matter like you know we're into diversity and we want more people in here because i feel like the more diverse the sport is the better the racing is going to be and 100%. yeah obviously obviously my my end goal is to become a race engineer so like you know working from an assistant engineer to a simulation engineer hopefully one day i can be a race engineer like there are paths and there are goals and so that's the plan we'll see how it goes that's all. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm here for that. And um, that will be awesome because then I can hopefully one day interview as a race engineer when you win the Indy 500, right? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the goal. Because that that's the, the goal. That, or the that's championship, the right? That, both, that's of those, the both of those are both the Chippy Nasty those. goals. <laughs> they, they are. They the 500 are, with the championship. What about... Oh. What, 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 I was just thinking, what about that last Indy 500? That was so close. Oh, you guys awesome. almost got that Indy 500. You yeah. almost had that one. Yeah. Well, we'll get it this year. Okay. Okay. Well, if, if it happens, there you go. I know. I know. One of the cars, right? We'll get, we'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. One goal. of the cars. It's Marcus the Erickson, Marcus Erickson did tell us in one of the interviews, he said, this year I'm going to, he's like, I'm going to win a race. And it, it, it's going to be an oval. And we were like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, go Marcus, go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. To uh, to kind of end on a positive note, um, you know, I do hear that you like to inspire others. So if, if you can, um, what advice would you offer just not only females and women mm -hmm. um, try, and girls trying to get into into this motorsports world, but how about just people in general, maybe that want to follow in your footsteps? Like what advice would you give them? Uh, it's just persistence in a sense. Don't give up, follow your dream, keep going and just, you'll make it, you'll get a break. Yeah, I, 
I did a lot to get in. I, I emailed, I called, I find, and finally it just worked. So it just takes persistence and it just takes, well, like, you know, obviously working hard, getting prepped. And then when you, when you finish school and you come out and you want, if you want to be a race engineer, yeah, work hard and work hard in school and then work hard to, you got to keep working hard to get in and find a spot for yourself. And then hopefully from there, it'll all work out. Yes. No, I think you're right. Persistence is key. And you know what? Let's let's just be real. That can apply to anybody. Um, That's, yes. And in and, and any career path too. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's working hard. It's working hard the whole way up, figuring out what you want to do, putting yourself on the path for success and then just like continuing to pursue it. Yeah. Whether it's racing or it's any other, any other career path, I think that's a good, a good strategy, I hope. <laughs> no, definitely. Definitely. Oh my goodness. Well, this was so much fun um, chatting with you. And I just want to say, Danielle, thank you so, so much. for. I know you are so busy, um, yeah. especially with the 500 coming up soon. Yeah. So yeah, definitely. So I appreciate it so much that you took time out of your day to chat with me. It's been a joy. And I, I want to say, but most importantly, I want to thank you, um, you know, for breaking and to do the IndyCar slogan, defying barriers, <laughs> like you are. So thank you for breaking the barriers and define, um, defying barriers so that, um, so that it's easier for people like me. Um, I am just, I mean, I'm, I'm not working in the industry on your level, but I am a motorsports journalist and to be able to see um, a, a woman be successful as you and breaking these barriers means a lot and inspires me as well. And it makes my, it gives me a purpose as well as a journalist. So I appreciate it. So thank you, Danielle. Awesome. Yeah, thank Yay. you. Thank you so okay. much for having me. Abs absolutely. Okay, um, good luck this season. <laughs> for, and, and most importantly, good luck for the 500. So yep. yeah, win the 500, win the championship. That. I know Chip likes winners. Chip likes winners. Chip likes winners. <laughs> Chip likes winners. Well, you're definitely a winner. So there you go. You are definitely in in awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you so much. Yeah. Have like I said, good luck this season. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.